G'day viewers, so I've got some of this uh, small building cable here. We ran it on the primary of this fly back. This is solid core copper cable, this. Used for a lighting circuit. And this thing pours about 10 amps, and uh, boy, this thing is absolutely M E N T A L, <laughs> so to speak. I put a lot of hot glue on those pins, and it seems it will stop this old Murata Mitsubishi flyback from marking over. We repaired quite well, but unfortunately, the plastic on this is brittled so much as I was handling it, it just crumbled off. So now I've got a naked flyback. The epoxy inside now is the only thing that's uh, holding it together. It's, uh, well, it's a pretty good flyback, just the plastic's just uh, gone like an eggshell um, with age. So I put this uh, rear projection TV flyback lead on there, soldered it on the um, high voltage uh, pin there the main cathode pin, so to speak. I'm going to fill it with more hot glue and slide this over it. And this thing is a beauty. Or was it Anthony uh, from High One Voltage on the rules would say? A B E A U T Y. The drive doesn't get very warm either. I have to um, parallel my uh, zeners when they are off to get more than one watt at 36 volts so they can handle it. It works quite well, this little setup. I'm quite happy with it. Okay, let's see how well this works out. Well, she's not pulling anywhere near as much amps now. Come on, fly back now. His wires are too stiff. Way too stiff. Unplug that. Discharge. Um, I have to redesign this. I can still clamp this onto something, so I'll find something with a hole in it and just clamp that anode cap down on something, and that'll be my electrode I can arc to. I always keep those instead of having to cut the wire and cut the wire and cut the wire every time I'd like to put new clips on it. I'll just use the original clip on the anode uh, cap there and clip it on a steel plate and it'll suck down onto a steel plate that's insulated. Then it can arc the other end with this. It's actually uh, sealed up quite well. I've actually got a lot of hot glue in there and pushed that over and it's completely filled up. So no arcing outs. Flyback actually works quite well. So how we go here. Alright, the brick's stopping it from moving. Forward short things out here. Yeah, there I can do that. Using the power pliers. Of course, safety first. Yeah, put about five amps now. I'm not putting so much current anymore. No, no, no arc outs on the flyback. Sweet. Well, now I'm reducing a lot of current here. Thick wire, thicker wire, more current. I'd say about whew, just on four inches long, I could push out of that. MOSFET's not even getting warm. Other wires here. Ooh, Corona. Yeah, a bit much. Um, that wire is ready for 40kV. Be careful, bloody he. Um, yeah, it's Corona, so I reckon it'll be at least close to 50, I reckon. Pushing into this little flyback. Interesting, so you are to fly back with a Hitachi lead in it. These older flybacks with uh, this setup are really quite uh, strong. Yeah, it's a bit warm. Prime is not even as warm as I thought it would be. Capacitor's not that warm. MOSFETs aren't even that warm. Just the flyback is the warmest. There we are, it's actually working quite well. Stuff on it with hot glue. You have to let your hot glue go and sit for a couple of minutes so they get really warm. That water glues like water, just so just start to be like oil. It's completely uh, sink down and uh, flood everything there, like I've done. It's actually uh, fixed that flood back up quite well. Alright, quite happy with that. 
I've got to find my little um, blue NST insulator from the antique NST. I can't bloody find where I put it. Because I want to um, make up an oil tank and stick that insulator on it with one of my other old, old vintage antique flybacks on it, like that one I burnt out. I got another one identical to that one. And I stick that one in on oil and put it on that um, NST insulator in a thing full of oil. Have it like um, how Anthony did. Have a ZVS driver there and just plug it in and go. Have a nice little uh, redneck homemade inverter NST, so to speak. You see, that got bloody hot. I'm mean, inducing some bloody current there. Okay, viewers, I've got these batteries topped up with a charger. And yeah, arcs are about that long now. It's about four, four to five inches long. But this uh, thing still arcs out. But the beauty of it is, as soon as the arcs restruck, the glue melts and quenches the arc again. Same principle as the Yingfo one is doing. So I'm going to have to tap into this high voltage lead and put in a spark gap to protect the fly back there. That thing's working quite well. I just got to make up a little block, of, some sort of insulating block with some... Uh, Mushroom head bolts as a spark cap, like uh, Maxi 2007 uses. Hey viewers, well, this uh, compressor has been taken apart, flushed in kerosene, and flushed in ADW90 so, uh, gear oil that gave it a good soaking, they lubricate everything. It's still a bit hard to turn there, I couldn't get the motor to start with this uh, pull starter. So much I tried, I broke the bloody pull rope. I've got to replace that. Let's do the job method. Yeah, that compressor's not liking this. I'm trying to kill it. Gotta hold a drill on there. Oh, yeah, never do that. Hold it, hold the trigger all the time when you pull it off, otherwise you're gonna break your wrist and destroy the drill as this thing fires. It's still hard to turn. Ooh. Yeah, she's getting warm. Mm. I put it back together exactly the way I put it apart, and now it's not pumping air anymore. Interesting. It's a little bit harder to cord than I thought.
no scariest thing a test. I'll turn this bloody light off. How the bloody hell is it? There we are. Come on, camera. This this experiment. Leave light off, camera. All right, let's give this thing a test. Arcing uh, screwdriver. I'll uh, give it a quick test here first. Oh, look at that. Yay! Just like Matthew 2007 does. And no flyback arc outs. Oh, I'm putting 11 amps. Oh, well, arcing like that on its own, it does arc out a little bit at the bottom of the flyback. Not as bad, because the glue is melting and quenching the arc. Man, I'm getting some more uh, fair bit of colour consumption there. Yeah, things aren't getting too warm. Alright, I'm going to have to get a wire from there. I just arc normally to here. And this, as the arc breaks, as I draw it, it's going to act as a proper spark gap and not uh, risk damaging the flyback. Because uh, even though these flybacks are a dying breed, I'm going to try and preserve them as much as I can. So, try not to pop these if I can. Even though they're so much fun. Um, I'll see if I can uh, put some clamps on this thing. Make a high voltage lead here. Put a little clip on that and we can clip that on and just arc by the other end. Okay, let's give it a test. I can't find my bloody spare clips, so let's give it a little arc here. Yeah, see? Pretty stiff. I haven't plugged it in, so safety first. Make sure everything's definite before I start plugging things in. Actually, I've got an idea. Okay, view as well. This thing's a bit too bloody flimsy. Let's give it a test. Fingers away here. Oh. Yeah, I'm getting good performance here. Corona on it though. Spark cap's not working either. Oh, well, unplug that. Close the spark a bit. Double check we've discharged the capacitor in that flyback. Oh yeah, flyback's warm. Alright. Good results, eh? Ha! Huh. Made the gap smaller and we've got much better protection. I've only put on 8 amps here. That is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Look at that. Yeah, nothing's too warm. The capacitor's a bit warm. Capacitor and the flyback are a bit warm. Mmm, the hot glue smells good when it's cooked. But it's doing its job in protecting the flyback, so there's no arc outs now. The uh, spark gap works quite well. Quite happy with that. MOSFETs are still cold. Mmm, works quite well. Anyway, I think that'll be enough for any of yours. Thanks for watching.